Let's talk about switching. In this video, I will go through how an Airfly for ATOM could be integrated with an X-Keys T-Bar, which is a USB device. Before we get to that point, I want to show you some of the options we have for switching because Airfly is one of the um, products that we have, which is a fairly um, great in price range. And it is in three versions for ATEM, TriCaster and VMix. And that means we put different key labels on them. You might know from uh, studying what Scala is doing that we generally put these nice displays above keys so that we don't have to label them. But we have made this um, great offering where there's labels printed on the keys themselves, which fit the particular system that we are working on, in this case, an ATEM switcher. So apart from, from this one, for instance, we also have the Airfly Pro, which is uh, fully flexible. So that is probably the option that most users are going for. This is uh, one of our most popular products at all, the Airfly Pro which is super um, flexible, free, doesn't have to be for ATEM, VMix, or TriCaster. It can just fit anything. So it's a matter of which configuration you load onto it. So that's super great. But uh, we also have a lot of uh, options. I'm thinking about the master key one, which you should know about because that's like the top of the line option before you get to what is called a mega panel. The mega panel is when you basically take key blocks like these. In itself, this one is not great for switching. It is a T-bar and it is button for card auto and so on. But you usually combine them up with an MK48, which is a product. Okay, let's just search MK48, Master Key 48. It looks like this. Uh, and it's um, basically the um, a delegation row for program preview and uh, aux sources, etc. So that's great. But Master Key 1 was my little mission here. So Master Key 1, there you go. This is a standalone control that actually is compatible with Master Key 48, as you can see, because you can extend it to the left with even more, adding that additional module. You can have more direct input sources available to your fingers. But here you have the T-Bar integrated as well, just like on the um, Airfly Pro. But going back to the Airfly, um, I... Um, yeah, let's let's see how this this is just a fresh install. So basically what I want to do is to pick a configuration and I suggest we go with the Airfly Atom uh, Unisketch port. I don't know what that is, but I'll just pick this one, which is called Atom Small, because I think we will be working on a small Atom switcher today. Actually, the one called Medium assumes that you will be adding onto it an additional module. Now, uh, devices discovered, whew, there's a lot of them, but let's just filter Atom. We'll pick a... Uh, let me see, hmm. which one should we pick? Uh, actually, I wanted to have the Constellation 2 of me, um, which is the one I'm connected to right there. So could I have that, please? It's kind of strange if it's not popping up. Uh, let me try again. Atom Constellation 2 of me. Okay, weird. I'll just pick this one real quick because I know that it is atom constellation to me on this ip address uh connected in the simulator you can see how the panel um you know looks uh, i can change sources around it is actually happening on the panel as well here so um yep that works uh have fader control as well and to verify that with the atom software control we can um, just move the simulation a little bit to the side here and you see the atom constellation here so as i'm changing my program and preview sources that works as expected, of course, cut, 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 and auto transition as well. All right, so all that is great. Now let's move on to setting up that T-bar as I promised you. So uh, basically a few things that needs to be done first. We need to install support for the X keys, um, but let me just um, again reiterate, what is it we're having here? We have the Airfly Pro, sorry, not the Airfly Pro, it is the Airfly, but it has a USB port on the backside. We also have the X keys T bar device. It is USB. So we'll just plug this USB device into the USB port on the side here. So that's done. And then uh, we even made a little uh, 3D printed case actually, because um, yeah, you can have it like this, but you can also put it into this case and place it on the side. So isn't that nice? At least we thought, and I want to show you where this is available to you because it's on our wiki page. 
So on our wiki, we have a whole section on raw panel integrations. And if you click the X keys raw panel integration page, you can um, browse the various options we have. You can find the um, T bar module here and we provide the step file for you to download and print yourself this little holder. So <clears throat> on this page, you'll find all this information, also how it works, how you can add multiple of these devices and licensing and all that good stuff. So uh, here we need to install the X keys package. So we'll do that. And uh, this is also explained on the wiki page. So go there. Um, but now I'll just show you straight up. It is running, but it's not finding the device. And that is because on settings, you need to go and enable USB-A. And after having done so, you need to reboot. And now we'll wait about 30 seconds before it is rebooted and has found the um, X keys device. So now after the reboot, we can go to the X panel X keys page. You can see in the logs that it um, did find the XBA T bar module. And that means we can go straight to the home screen here. We should be able to just add the panel and find it on the network. It will announce itself by MDNS discovery because the X panel X keys application basically converts that USB device into a network device, uh, raw panel compliant, which we can now connect to on this IP address and port. And then we can start creating configuration. So that's how we um, roll and let me just uh, we'll create a new configuration we need to give it a name transition control great okay and now we can go straight to configuration where we can utilize reactor 2.0 to set up the uh, x keys device and uh, let's just uh, fit all maybe show all so we basically how this works is that the airfly is there as the host device and then it is adding in the x keys panel uh, additionally, right now we have the airfly configuration enabled. So we change over to transition control. And that means we are now focusing on the uh, X keys T bar block. The first thing we want to do, of course, is to click on the T bar and then assign navigation to it. So we can, um, uh, sorry, not navigation, but transition. So we'll pick this one and then we'll pick atom transition for this T bar. And we would then expect now that it's actually doing transition on the uh, ATEM switcher. And then we need to select the ME row that it's operating on. And as having done so, we are now able to do this transition. Actually, for you to really see this, we definitely need to set the ATEM software control up here. So let's just, you see it in the simulation tool, which is super cool in a sense. And it's kind of reflected there. All right. So I think this is what it takes, more or less. So you can see here in the, as I'm now moving the T-bar, let's try it. All right, you ready? I'm moving the T-bar and I'm doing transition with the X keys T-bar. So also changing over here on the airfly. Okay, would be the same if I'm using the fader here. I can also do that. Or I can use the T-bar. What else can we do? Maybe there are a few other things we can actually do. So I will go back to full screen. What about making this into a cut button? How quick can that be done? Well, transition, select the ME row. It's a cut button now. Let's check it in the simulation. Maybe if we fit all, we can sort of gain confidence in that it's uh, cutting. Cut, cut, cut. I'm pressing the button, the cut button. And um, we could go back and then do something else. Ugh. click this guy and maybe make a um, auto transition that would be quickly done we can also um, make this one into a paging button because we can actually create multiple pages and uh, so right now we are kind of challenged so what are we going to put on all these buttons first of all x keys can deliver blanks they can also deliver deliver like uh, key caps that are like double caps so you can kind of set this up as you want and fit it. You can put uh, labels under the keys also. These are RGB keys, by the way, so they will respond with RGB color depending on what you set up inside of, uh, of Reactor here. So you see my cut and auto buttons, they are white, but it's possible even here to, uh, if I click on the cut button, then I can choose show more. I can find the feedback and then I could pick a different color for it. So if I want it to be amber instead, then I just pick it like that. So it's quite easy using Reactor 2.0 to do these things. But I want to show you what happens if I create a new page. So that could be Kias. So I'll create one. I'll keep it transparent. Uh, will I? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, wait, I'll just not. So having a non-transparent page means that as I'm now going to the Kias page, you can see that it is not anymore accessible to, to see the um, cut and auto button. And you'll see on the video here that going between these two pages, I'm now on the second page, just like if you had a stream deck or whatever. So um, what will I put on this second page? Well, um, you can use all the buttons as you want, but uh, in this case, over the cut button, just to make the point, I'll make this into a upstream Kia enable. Um, and once again, I need to set the ME row, which Kia it is. And uh, if it's doing like toggle, let's just do toggle. That's super fine. Okay, so this one could be copied over onto the button next to me here. So I'll paste it in and then I'll just select Kia number two on this one. So that should be now two different two different uh, Kias uh, experiences we have here. Let's have the ATEM software control come up. So as I'm now pressing these buttons, you'll see that the one is enabled. It is toggled on and off. We have this one toggled on and off. That is all great. And now notice, as I'm going to my background layer, I'm back to having cut and auto on these two. So we have cut, 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 and we have auto transition on that one. So all we need basically, and this is me showing you how Reactor 2.0 works. All we need now is to have a navigation key. Let's make that one our navigation key. So on the background layer, we'll just close down the ATEM and find navigation. We'll like pick the one called go to page, and then we'll say, I wanna go to the Kias page on this one. And then you go to the Kias page and you make this button into one that would go to the background page. So like that, and now I have navigation on this key up here, going between those two pages. That is pretty cool. Guess what shift levels are? This is something we added for broadcasters because it's usually so that you need a shift level uh, within each page. You might do that. It's not necessarily so, but if you do, then we have these two dimensions in our implementation of a paging paradigm found in Reactor 2.0. Thanks for watching this video. I, I, I hope that it was really inspiring, a way that you can combine uh, other devices with your Skahoy as the host system and expanding with the Skahoy modules. You can always do that. Or you can do it with USB devices, which we convert into raw panel enabled network devices. And then you can just add them in with the IP address and port number. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, write questions to innovationlab at skahoy.com. If you have um, any comments or suggestions for me, then I would uh, really appreciate knowing about them. And thanks for watching so faithfully. Uh, you are all inspiring me with your comments and feedback. So I will have many more cool and interesting videos to show you. Uh, I love doing these things and love hearing how you guys are utilizing it in your live production.